Hello everyone and welcome to the Vita Box Labs. Today we are here with Sergio the Albuquerque of Vita Box and just wanted to find out so what we're up to for today. So uh, uh, the past couple of weeks I've been working on a project uh, for a company called Trace Industrial. They are doing a project um, for a clubhouse. It's actually a recreational center for a university a dorm. Uh, so they are needing to do some AV uh, switching and doing some things there. So I was going to go over that project and uh, uh, what they were looking to do there, the hardware that we uh, specced into it, and um, you know the schematics we drew up for it and everything. Basically what they want to do, this is a, a recreational center like I explained, and they have a couple of different areas and they have uh, TVs pretty much laid out throughout uh, the whole space. So the clubhouse uh, comprises of the entrances here with the lobby uh, the lobby is going to have uh, one TV uh, located here, uh, some speakers put into the ceiling. Um, they have a couple of offices also with speakers where they want to be able to play some music and other things. Uh, they have a con conference study room. Uh, I don't think there's a TV in there, uh, but uh, th they wanted some music in there. Uh, there's a fitness gym. Uh, there's two TVs in that particular area. Again, a whole bunch of speakers in there. Uh, they have an outdoor pool area um, with speakers placed out, you know, throughout the area there. They have a cabana, which is pretty cool. They also have a pretty large LCD in there, uh, and uh, that'll be another TV area where the students can watch some TV. Uh, they have a multi-purpose room. I'm not quite sure what they're doing in there, but uh, they have another two LCD TVs hung up there, as well as one of our uh, uh, touch clients, which you, you'll see here and we'll, we'll show in a little while. And the coolest part, I, I guess for me, that I like, they have a theater in there as well for the students. And the theater is going to include two LCDs uh, plus a JVC uh, high definition projector. Uh, in the theater area, it is going to have a touch client 12 as well mounted into the, to the wall. Um, so the overall project is pretty neat. Um, there's a lot of TV uh, zones. Uh, some, I guess, the uniqueness of this that makes it a little bit more difficult in terms of programming-wise for the uh, for later on once we get into the automation is uh, doing the logic of you know what do you want to play in the different TVs and where is the sound coming from from what TV. Uh, but uh, so that's the particulars on this particular project. So it's basically just uh, uh, switching in some sources into the different TVs. So the sources that they're going to uh, incorporate into this project are, are pretty basic. Uh, they wanted to have a cable box uh, available for each TV, uh, so there's going to be a stack of nine cable boxes, so we can look at the, the schematic that we kind of drew up here. So they're going to have a stack of, of nine cable boxes, one for each LCD TV plus the projector. Uh, they're also going to have a Samsung Blu-ray player, uh, and with the cable boxes what they wanted to be able to do was uh, one was be able to play, you know, different TV shows at each TV, uh, or be able to play, you know, kind of simulcast one TV show on all the TVs or a group of TVs uh, throughout the facility. So um, to do uh, to provide that capability, you need some sort of AV uh, matrix switcher. And uh, what we did here is we spec'd in an ADA Suite 16 uh, system um, uh, with a uh, component switching card which you'll see down here. Uh, so basically what happens is uh, all the outputs from the cable boxes and the Samsung Blu-ray player get converted over um, into CAT5 using their uh, component converter. The CAT5 cable then gets routed back into the uh, switcher card. Uh, then there's another uh, CAT5 output uh, from that card which gets run over to the TVs. There's another converter there that'll convert back to component and we plug the video back into each TV. So the special case zone in this happens to be the theater zone which has a um, JVC projector as well as a 5.1 receiver or 7.1, I'm not sure if they're doing 7.1 speakers. So what we did in that zone is um, you know, the Blu-ray player is being fed in component through the matrix switcher and that'll feed all these LCDs here. But we wanted to have uh, a higher quality connection for the JVC projector, so we decided to go HDMI into the Denon receiver, uh, as well as being able to tune in any of these cable boxes. So the way that was done is 
uh, we're taking one output from the switching card here and feeding that into the Denon receiver uh, as a separate input. So the Denon receiver can take component N which will allow us to tune in any of the cable boxes or uh, take HDMI in from the Samsung Blu-ray player and be able to play the Blu-rays in full you know, HD uh, format through the HDMI connection. A couple additional sources that they uh, wanted was uh, some, some uh, uh, satellite radio tuners. So we expect in the ADA QuadraTune. Uh, the ADA uh, QuadraTune allows you to put in four separate tuners. So one tuner in this particular job is going to be a Cirrus tuner an XM tuner, and two HD radio tuners. And all that is getting fed into the matrix switching system so that they can play those tuners at any zone uh, in the facility. And the, uh, the last source that they added in was an iPod dock. So we used the ADA um, iPod dock for that, and that's being fed in as a separate source. And again, they'd be able to tune in uh, that uh, iPod dock in any of the audio zones or video zones throughout the facility. So before I start any project, uh, I like to draw a schematic because it helps me to understand the different connections and where the different things go. Uh, without that, it makes it very hard to program because you really need to know uh, where each of the cable boxes are plugging into, what input uh, number on the cards, what the different TVs, where they're getting plugged into. So this is one of the most important parts. It really helps me as a programmer to... Uh, organize my thoughts and also have it as reference material later on just you know six months later I won't remember where everything was plugged in uh, at least now if we need to make some changes or the customer wants to add some things we can do that you know by uh, I'll just reference the schematic and I know where everything's plugged in so just to I guess look at some of the stuff on the schematic uh, so this this is the first uh, schematic I drew uh, this is just the basic AV connections and just shows uh, all the AV uh, audio and video connections and how they're uh, going through all the hardware that we're plugging in here. I then also do a um, what I call input output mappings. So this is basically a uh, a chart type of view on each of the cards or inputs and outputs and where they're going to. Uh, this is a visual representation. This is kind of like a written down representation. Sometimes it's hard to follow each of these lines and which where it's going. I can quickly go here and see, you know, port one is supposed to be uh, plugged into the Quadra Tuner Cirrus radio. Um, you know, port six is supposed to be the Fitness Right uh, TV uh, and things like that. So this really helps to organize my thoughts and quickly see what the import uh, the port numbers are and where they're supposed to be routed to. The other drawing I did here is the IR control schematic. So we do have a bunch of IR control. So all the cable boxes are being controlled using IR and the TVs are being controlled using IR. So for the IR control part of it, um, there are a couple of different options with the V Automation platform, but the one I like the most is using Global Cache. Uh, they make a network um, IR uh, controller which allows you to uh, send I IR uh, through any of their ports. So I wanted to show you the global cache units. I don't, some of you may not be familiar with what they are, but basically what a global cache unit allows you to do is uh, this is a network device so you plug this uh, into the network. Uh, once it's on the network uh, our V automation platform can talk to it and allow us to send out IR uh, signals through any of these six IR ports. Now they have a couple different models. This happens to be the GC100-10. Uh, the dash 10, as you see here, has six IR ports that we can send uh, IR signals out of. They also include three relay ports and two serial ports. This particular job, we're not using the serial ports or the relay ports. We're just going to be using the IR out capability. So then you would just plug in your IR bug into here, route it over, put it on the TV, and, or whatever other device you're trying to control. Uh, so that would give, give you basic IR capability. In this particular job, we need four of them. There's quite a, a bit of, quite a few uh, devices that we need to control using IR. To learn more about this project, simply watch the next video, or visit our website, vitabox.com, or give us a call. Thanks for watching.